This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. All the stuff from the show that happened but didn't happen. We can uh, just touch qu- slightly the on that. never st- happened. Yeah. That happened. And the switch is on. I see the levels. Everything's recording. We are good to go. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Nice one. Funny enough, that was Zia. Oh, dude, mine are probably louder than that. I actually just did one off the mic. <laughs> oh. Does the studios that you use, do they have a little cough button so you can do those things? No. Or do you wear the lavalier? Uh, the lapel mics? Yeah. No, no. We just use regular, like the mics are in front of us. And I like, I just have to not do that if it's on camera. You know, it should be fun if you have to do it on the air sometime. So if you're on the air and you're talking, you feel it coming and it's like, oh my God, what do I do? You go like this just for dramatic effect. Because if you know that's coming... Hopefully they get to a two shot so you see both of you and you go to belts like this in your hand and then you go like that and you throw it at somebody and then you just keep going. Let them react. You don't acknowledge it. It's not your problem. Gross. You've moved on. I like that too. I would do that though. My co-host Christian would just, he would call attention to it immediately. Just say, no, 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 we move past that and you just keep going. And then he sits there all derailed. He's like, no, wait, we're going to talk about, no, no, I've already moved on. And you go on to the next thing. You just plow through it. And then it gets to the point where you can't do anything about it anymore. The burp has happened. It's over. Let's go. Right. It's Eric Nagel. And it starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, the next voice you hear is Eric Nagel. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of It's Eric Nagel, and that is me. Over in the Upside Down, that would be Giddles. Hey, what's up, man? And joining us once again from the left coast would be our pal Zia Anderson is here. Hello, hello. I like that you call it the left coast. That's so I can sound like I'm trendy and hip. If you're facing the states going up, it's, it's to the left, like from Mexico. Or if I turn around the other way, it's back into the left. Back and to the left. Yeah, but if you're facing south, then the left is us. Well, if I now face south, I'll think about directions, wonder why we haven't before. Like, are we like talking like looking on a globe, left coast? Is that what you're just saying, Eric? Well, yeah, it's, it's left compared to us on the right, if we were in the center of the country, where I would just stand in the place where I live. Maybe I'll face north. I don't know. Anything's possible. Anyway, welcome to the program. It's Eric Nagel across the board on social media if you want to follow the program and see what's going on with that. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to get in touch with anybody here on the program, 651 Smithers, 651 764 8437 is the phone number. Uh, today's show is, is, is a little bit different because you may have noticed there was no episode last week. And the reason for that is the studio, the main studio that we use, connects to other studios and connects to uh, other studios, whether they're in the vicinity or if we dial into other places, what have you, there's one switch that needs to be on and it's always on, always on that connects to this studio, to a thing that records the show. And we looked at the recorder. It was on. We looked at all the studios. Everything was working. What we didn't notice is this one switch that nobody ever thinks to look at was not on. So the audio did not go from this studio to that recorder. So we did a whole show for ourselves, and that's pretty much where it ended up. It's not even up in the ether for the heavens to hear somewhere out in space as it travels through the universe. It was just in two remote studios, and that's where it shall forever sit. You know you just didn't hit record, Eric. Mm. We know that's what happened. That was the problem. We did hit record, and we went to look at the file, and then all of a sudden we noticed it's an hour and 50 minutes of dead air. The royal we. I didn't get a chance to look at this. No, you did not. It was just one big empty stick of nothing. So then I was like, oh, no, this isn't what working. You're, what you're used to every week. No, we you, we have a show every week, except last week. It just didn't. Ha- well, we did it. Technically, we did it. We just don't have proof that we did it. Except I have the tear sheet from last week's show about everything we talked about. And uh, we can just go over it real quick of all the stuff that we did talk about in length. The what? That's all right, Eric. We can we could scan it and put it on the Instagram. No, we could do that. We could run. Well, Zia wasn't here either, so we can run through it real quick of the topics that we discussed. If you have anything that you want to chime in, Zia, and and tell us your thoughts on it, 
feel free to do so. Uh, the first thing we talked about on the show that didn't happen was the big promotion in New York City for French's when they had their mustard ice cream. Now, it was going to be three days in New York, but what was weird was the first day was Manhattan, the second day was Brooklyn, and then the third day was East Hampton, which is all the way on the far end of Long Island. So that technically really isn't the New York City promotion. The, the rightest of the coast. Right. As far right as you could. So that happened. Uh, we didn't get a chance to go down to sample the actual ice cream mustard. It was over at uh, Rockefeller Center that they had uh, the whole display to give out. I, I, we thought just because it would be right there, the Today, Today Show would pick up. And lo and behold, yes, they did. They set it up right outside of the Today Show so that it would get on the Today Show. Did not get a, ch- did not get a chance to try it, but everybody that did, uh, people that we trust their opinions on, told us that it has a slight mustard aftertaste. But it really just it didn't live up to anything because I thought it was going to be disgusting. A lot of people thought it'd be disgusting. It's a very vivid yellow color, and Sounds good to me. They tied in with that. Uh, I forget the other ice cream company. It wasn't that French has made the ice cream? They tied in with this specialty kind of like a bougie ice cream place that uh, put it out as a partnership. Then they were going to California, which I think was in this past week. They had samples out there. I don't know if they're going to do some kind of national rollout with it. But this was the same company that had that ice cream I talked about a long time ago that made the milkshake and French fries ice cream. Cool house. Uh, so, yeah. So they teamed up with French and uh, French's and they put out the mustard ice cream. Did you see anything about the Zia? Any chance that you would want to try it if it was in your area? I didn't see anything about this, um, but I think we have a cool house here and I've been to it before. It's in Culver City. So I, I know what it is. And I think I just got some regular random ass ice cream. I would try French fries and milkshake, and I would probably try mustard just to try it, but that sounds fucking gross. Yeah, it was pretty gross. But you said it was pretty gross. It sounds pretty gross, and the people I know that did try it told me how gross it was, and I trust their opinions. And while we were talking about that, Gittles found this Japanese mayonnaise ice cream that he had put uh, posted something online about, and apparently that's supposed to be amazing, and I'm not saying that as a fan of mayonnaise, but... A lot of the reviews of, of people who have tried this particular product said it's really good. I mean, like ice cream is the same, almost the same ingredients as mayonnaise, so it's not that far off. Yeah, you eggs, know, sugar, just, salt. You know, probably less vinegar, less salt, and stuff like that. It's probably pretty good. Is that now, is, is mayonnaise ice cream have the flavor of mayonnaise, or is it just like really creamy vanilla ice cream? I am assuming that it has the flavor of mayonnaise, so that it tastes like like something you put on a turkey sandwich. Yeah, they lose me completely with that. I'm not a big, sorry, Eric, I'm not a big mayonnaise person. I, I don't know what it is. I think because I grew up just not eating it. So whenever I had it, I was like, what is this? So I don't know about mayonnaise ice cream. Mayonnaise is more of a Midwest and a Southern kind of thing. You growing up in Hawaii and then living in Los Angeles. Yes, not big mayonnaise territory areas. They're more of a of a honey mustard. They're more of some kind of like a aioli style mayonnaise instead of a traditional kind of mayonnaise, avocado based stuff out there. You're looking at the uh, what they call the good saturated fats as opposed to the bad ones that come from mayonnaise. Well, also, my dad was an amateur bodybuilder, so he just like didn't really have that kind of stuff around. He was like Mr. Healthy Man. So there was no like mayonnaise in the house. I grew up on, you know, like the natural peanut butter that you have to stir. I don't think I had like Jeff or Skippy until I like was well into my adult life. Well, you're not missing anything. I mean, if you had natural peanut butter, it, for those who don't know. That the, stuff is the best. It That's is the, the best. I like. it, it, some people get grossed out when they see it in the supermarket or in Whole Foods or, or any kind of specialty store where you see the peanut butter about three fourths of the jar and then about a quarter of the jar is the oil because it separates. It doesn't stay together. Air sealed, obviously, but people look at it and go, ew, gross, the oil. And that. it's like. It's the same thing in the mixed peanut butter, except the way that it's mixed, it's more of like the, uh, I think it's like, uh, you know, the process that they do for Cool Whip, it's like the hydrogenated oil in there, so yeah, it stays it's in it. like an emulsification type thing, so it all, it's all like whipped in there. Right. But like, I've seen people who buy the natural peanut butter and then pour the oil off on the top. I'm like, well, how are you going to eat it now? Like. They're like, oh, get rid of that. It's not healthy. I'm like, no, but like, you have, you need that no, to mix it. It's the healthy part of the actual pure peanut butter. Like all those idiots that were buying the Mister Mixer late at night on the on the uh, you know the the paid programming things when whatever channel you were watching 
too long, turned off at 2 a.m. and had all this paid program. You'd see the Mr. Mixer stuff or um, the the Bullet Blender, those kind of things where they're showing how you put the peanut butter there and you oh, make your so own great. peanut butter. The oil that they show you that that's in with the whole thing, they're not adding like Wesson oil to it. It's the oil from making it. It just, in that form, it does separate. Good salad dressings do that too. The oil and the vinegar don't always stay together. You shake it up a little bit, you, you distribute it, and then you let it sit for a little bit and it separates again. But that oil is part of the peanut that is good fat for you. And uh, I, I've seen people do that too. They're either grossed out that they won't buy it. So they'll buy the other stuff. Or they just think it's extra fat and an oil and they throw it out like yeah. it's not healthy. It's like, no, you need that though. Like, you can't stir it now. What yeah. are you going to do? Yeah, you just shove a spoon in there. You mix it all up and you you serve it. You have it on your sandwich or toast or whatever you're doing with it. You put it back. And, and in most cases, you don't even need to refrigerate peanut butter. Like you, sh- I usually do. I'm one of the people that do, but I know people that they just put it right back in the counter there, and it separates, and you stir it up again. It doesn't, it doesn't spoil like that. The nice thing about that peanut butter too is that it spreads a lot easier because once you mix it up, it's just a little bit softer than like Skippy or Jiff or whatever it is, so it goes on the bread nicer. Yeah, it's like, way you better. Don't- people are just dumb. They don't think about the thing. Like they, they just automatically assume it looks gross. I mean, I used to be that way a long time ago. Where like, oh, I'm not trying that. It's like, no, there's a reason and a method to certain things. And once you know that, then you're like, oh, man, I can't even have the other stuff anymore. I need to have this stuff. One exception I'll make is um, not from Jif because we didn't have that. I guess we had Jif or Jif or Skippy. I guess it depended what was on sale that week growing up. But outside of those, you can uh, you like to get the ones in the glass jar where the peanut butter separated. You got to stir it up or. Um, I think it's, is it called the peanut butter company? Yeah. The peanut butter company, peanut butter company used to be, uh, used to have one around the block from the comedy cellar downtown there in the village. You walk over there and you just get like a peanut butter and banana sandwich or just any kind of peanut butter sandwich, all different kinds of peanut butter they made. It was really good. That's the exception I'll buy to now. If I don't have to buy the other things, I'll buy the peanut butter company peanut butter because they got a white chocolate peanut butter they got a chunky peanut butter which is really good uh, some people get the chocolate peanut butter that's already mixed together some are a half and, and half lemon and the maple syrup see i'm not a big maple syrup fan like that but i could see why people would like it it would mix in well but that's like that's a hired end of a commercial brand that still i think would be acceptable unless you buy the pure stuff where it all separates out of the glass I want to go to this peanut butter place. You sold me on it. Holy crap, that sounds amazing. I wonder if they're not on the West Coast. I've literally never heard of it. I There's a shit ton of stuff that I've missed out on growing up in Hawaii that I'm like, I have no fucking idea what that is. Fluff. I never had fluff. I never had a fluff or nutter until I want to say two or three years ago. Most amazing thing ever. If you're a marshmallow okay. fan, yeah. I'm not a marshmallow fan. I don't like marshmallows, so I, I wouldn't. I would never eat that. And a lot of girls growing up used to eat this. The jar, they would just shove a spoon in there and eat it that way. Or uh, uh, icing, cake icing. Girls would just pop the oh, lid yeah. open and All just eat time. that as a treat. And I, I used to think that was so gross. I think girls have a natural affinity towards sweeter things, I've noticed. Like, uh, I mean, obviously, some guys like sweets and stuff a lot, too. But I think it's more a girl thing. Although my grandfather did use to eat icing with a spoon, but it used to be because he was a meth addict. And when you quit that, he just replaced it all with like copious amounts of sugar. Hmm. It doesn't sound healthy either. Not healthy, but you got to replace something with something at that stage in your life. So it's like, well, meth addict, diabetes. I'll take my chance with diabetes. <laughs> I feel like as as long as you moderate yourself, it's fine. Like, I mean, he ate a lot of sugar, but he ate other stuff, too. So he balanced it out anyway. So the the French's mustard ice cream was something we talked about. Then we also talked about our affinity for salted pretzels that don't exist anymore. We uh, I don't know if this was an East Coast thing, too. I don't know if you had it out in Hawaii where you were, but there used to be a brand back in the long, long ago called Mr. Salty. It was a pretzel stick that wore a sailor's cap like he was in the Navy. Blue bag with a red, uh, I think it was part of Nabisco. I think it was a Nabisco product. Yeah, something like that. And it was probably the saltiest pretzel, commercial pretzel, that you ever tasted. Like, it was just covered in salt. And then the best part was if you you got towards the end of the bag, 
You could take some of the pretzels, and yeah, if you Nabisco. lick the salt off of that, you just drop them into the bottom of the bag and resalt the pretzel again. That sounds awesome. I've never had that because I've never heard of that before, but I've had salted pretzels. My favorite are, um, I can't remember what the brand is, but they have like the honey mustard pretzel pieces. Snyder's, that's what it is. Uh, Snyder's of Hanover. It's out of Pennsylvania. I get the box of sourdoughs all the time. I took a trip not too long ago. I went out there to Hanover, and then about... 20 something minutes from it was also the uh the Utz family plant for their snacks and I'd go there and you get the the big plastic tub like obnoxiously big plastic tub of their cheese balls or snowballs depending on the holiday season where they're the white cheddar or they do cotton candy for the summer where they're just blue cheese balls you get that but you get all their chips fresh off the assembly line bagged and tagged and you buy it in the store for a fraction of what it is in in the store commercially it, it reminds you of the old general store like for people that were some kind of factory worker or a coal miner or things like that. You had the company store. That's the feeling you get when you come there because yeah. it comes right off the assembly lines, right into the into the little area there, and you just buy it fresh in those bags and all different kinds of flavors and just load up the car. And that whole thing only cost me fifty bucks, where that probably would have cost you one hundred fifty bucks in the stores. That also sounds like friggin' snack heaven. Oh my god! There's a lot of great snack stuff in Pennsylvania, and then there's also. Uh, what was that other one I found? Martin's potato chips, which is, has nothing to do with the potato rolls. The Martin's pretzels are really good. I have not tried those. Those I had to try. They have them at like the most farmers markets in the city. They sell them by the bag, and uh, they're really salty. There. What was that brand you told me about? That I, I think I saved it here somewhere. The unique. Yes, you need here it is. Extra salt. Yes, if for uh, for those of you listening, or Z, if you want to look it up, unique pretzels. Right. They have a brand that's called extra uh, or a version of their brand called extra salt. And it's just it looks like those um, those uh, snow cap candies, you know, where it would be chocolate that just smothered in those little white uh, caplets or, or whatever they were on top of it. That's what these pretzels look like. It's, it's just tons of salt. And then maybe there's pretzel under it. So good. So they had that. And then they also had a version called sourdough craft beer pretzel rings where it's just pretzel circles. That are thick sourdough, also covered in salt. Looks amazing. Wanted to buy those. And we also talked about uh, the other pretzels that we found on Amazon a while ago. Somebody sent us those Dots pretzels out of, out of uh, I want to say, North Dakota. I think so. It had a unique kind of spicy, buttery flavor to it. They're so really good. buttery. They had a, a lot of flavor to them. Um, I think there was a lot of like nutritional yeast on it, which almost gave it like a cheesy flavor. It right. was It was interesting. Um, and you also sent me the bag of the breadcrumbs with it, which I use to make like oh, for cooking. Like right. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get like yeah, two those are interesting pretzels. You get two one pound bags for under 10 bucks. It was a great bundle. Anyway, now anyway. I just want food. Now you guys have made me hungry and I just want to eat cheese puffs and pretzels. <laughs> nice Skittles. He just holds up the pretzel snacks to the camera. What are those? Hobbit bacon habanero. Fuck. That sounds awesome. Yeah. They're pretty good. Not a bad way to spend a weekend. Cheesy poofs and uh, and salted pretzels. Uh, we also talked about that survey that showed the number one fast food place in America. And this could come into some of your expertise, Zia, and being on the West Coast and having some of the better fast food chains out there. Uh, the number one fast food chain, they said, for the... Um, uh, was unseated by Chick-fil-A this time. And they were claiming that the number one fast food franchise in, in the United States was in and out Burger. And we said that's bullshit because even though it's in a handful of states, it's not across the whole entire country. And the world knows it as a novelty to California, that when you go to California, you go to in and out Burger. All the other rubes think like, oh, they have a secret menu. Do you know about Animal Style? Yes, everybody knows about Animal Style. You don't know the secret menu because if you knew the secret menu, you wouldn't be talking about Animal Style burgers and french fries. There's weird shit on that menu that changes time to time. But you have to ask somebody there who knows the secret menu. They don't really advertise a whole hell of a lot of it. But in and out Burger was never the number one chain. Like, I thought it was going to be like McDonald's because it's the most commercial. It's, it's in every location. But in and out Burger is okay at best. It's not horrible, but it, it's not like a place you would go to all the time. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I like it. It's good and everything. But I like um, Steak and Shake better, actually. Shake Shack is pretty good. 
I like steak and shake though. For some reason, that was the best when I was going through and trying all the burger places. I've never been to a steak and shake. I didn't There's none either. over here, so we don't really get them. There was a bunch of them when I was living in Florida. I never went to one. I kept meaning to try it, go and try it. I just never did. There was something about it. And I don't know if this was just because I had walked like two miles before I ate one and I was like starving, if that's why it was so good. But it was just, it was so fucking good. Like the the quality of the patty and the way the cheese was melted on it. I don't know. It was awesome. But Shake Shack's pretty good too. Um, in and out yeah, it's one of those ones where it's fine. Like, I like it. Like, going in and out I'm like, oh, this is, and it's cheap, so it's like a nice, oh, I just want to go have a burger. Um, it's better than uh, Carl's Jr. That is my least favorite, I think, of, like, the fast food burger places out here. Carl's There's Jr. There's a steak and shake in Paramus, New Jersey, Eric. We should go. All right, we should go. I'll go and try it out and see how it is. I've always meant to. I just never did. Uh, Carl's Jr. is the franchise that tries too hard. Like, they spent all that money to get uh, celebrity nobodies to, that looked hot in bikinis or something for a while and posing with cars and the burger to make it all sexy and, and trying to get people. Carl's Jr. and Hardee's the same place? Their own, yes. They were technically, for the longest time, they were two separate companies. Hardee's was just that restaurant you happen to see if you were uh, one of those families that drove to Florida. And you were going down I-95 and you would see at the rest stop stuff like, what's a Hardee's? Like, you never heard of it, really. It's I guess it was more of a of a Southern and a Midwest kind of thing. Maybe like on the scale of like a Howard Johnson's or a Denny's or in, in that. Hojo. Yeah, in, in that category. Uh, but uh, a while back, the, the either they merged or a company bought one company bought the other. Now all it, it, they're both the same restaurant. They just kept the names depending on where they are in the country, and the logos look exactly the same, just like Checkers and Rallies did. If you if you don't know what Checkers is, that's they started out I think as a southern chain, and then eventually spread out to other places too. But uh, There's che- a Checkers by me, Checkers. Ra- I didn't I didn't discover Checkers until the the nineties when we went down to Florida, and there just happened to be one. Well, there was there. one that opened up in Bayshore, right over by the McDonald's. Yeah, but that was later on. That was not. It wasn't that much later. Like I was in high school going there. Really? Like it wasn't. Yeah, dude. Wow. Okay. No, I knew. I knew if this, uh, this before was. Oh yeah, you're right. I do remember where it was now, but I didn't go to that one. It's like uh, a bank there. Wait, now. was it? Was it Checkers or was it that Chevy's Burger? No, Chevy's was the place in town that I worked at. That little shitty place. Yeah. That wasn't a chain. That was just a one-off place. Right. All right. Yeah. So there was a Checkers. I didn't. I never went there when it was in when I was in Long Island. But yeah, it was something I discovered going down south. Like that was the first time I ever, ever heard of it. Uh, but I I'm a big fan. Like Carl's Jr. I haven't even had a chance to try. They opened one in New York, in Times Square, Manhattan, thinking like, oh, this will be our big break to get onto the East Coast. And there were lines for a couple of days. People wanting to try it, and then all of a sudden, people were like, this doesn't. This burger was eh. Like nobody gave a fuck about it. When you got a shake, when you got Shake Shack, and look at worst, you got McDonald's and Burger King all throughout Manhattan and Wendy's. So you got your your basic and a few White Castles. Yeah, you got some basic staples there. Uh, if you want to step it up a little bit, there's a few other places. Like you'll find some Five Guys, which is ridiculously overpriced, or the knockoff ones called Five Burrows. Uh, you'll see those a couple places. Five Burrows. Yeah, there's a place I've called. Never seen. It that. looks Burger similar. It, it looks it's a it's a pretty good ripoff. Of five guys, like it's the oh, same color Google scheme. This. Yeah, I th- uh, look for uh, where was it? I want to say Sixth Avenue in the '30s in Manhattan. You know, if you want to step it up, you got Shake Shack, and then you got Chick Fil A. Now is in uh, has been in New York for the last couple of years, and that's always crowded. There's no need to go to some of these other crappier places. Carl Jr.'s came and went really fast, did nothing. Uh, I remember Fat Burger opened up in Jersey City, which is another West Coast staple. And that didn't last long either. It just sucks. I mean, because I wanted to go try it. And by the time I remembered it was over there, it was gone. I think Fat Burger is another one of those ones. It's just okay. I've been to a couple of them. But for some reason, every time I check, I check reviews just because, I don't know, I'm sketched out going to certain places. But they always have over here like two and a half star reviews where I'm like, I don't know if I want to trust that. No, not at all. Jack in the Box used to be on the East Coast and then disappeared in the early 80s. It was all over the place. Now it's just solely a West Coast chain. And every time we were in San Diego, we made we made sure to go to that Jack in the Box because Jack in the Box. Here's the thing. On paper, you would think it sounds terrible. 
right? Because it's hamburgers, it's some chicken, they have breakfast burritos, they have tacos, they have, it's like a little of everything there. But when you go there, it's amazing. It's not like Burger King that keeps trying to throw a million different things on their menu and, and just failing miserably. Jack in the Box, I don't know what it is. It's just greasy awfulness that tastes amazing. I never had Jack in the Box because they always had E. coli poisoning scares. My mom was like, that's garbage. We're never, we're never going to eat there. So there was one in like Amityville or Massapequa or something like that on Sunrise, and we never went. The one I remember was when I lived in Brentwood. There was one over near, I forgot the road name, but it was over, if you go down 2nd Avenue, it's where the Brentwood train station is. Like it was, uh, like the tracks would be here, then right next to the tracks would be, uh, there was an IHOP, there was a Jack in the Box, which has been a White Castle for, you know, since the early 80s now. But yeah, I remember going to Jack in the Box with the big clown head for the box that you had to yell in. Honestly, I love Jack in the Box. We had one in Hilo. We had one. And it was my favorite place to go to when I was hungover because of their jalapeno poppers and their mozzarella sticks and their curly fries. So good. When we were doing San Diego one year, and the the first hotel that we stayed at was right next to the Jack in the Box. Matt and I went there twice a day, breakfast and late night snack. So we'd, we'd get up to go... Uh, to hit the light rail to go over to the convention center, we'd stop at Jack in the Box, get breakfast burritos, chicken biscuits or chicken sandwiches, whatever they had, take that on the light rail with us. Then we come back late at night. Sometimes I would get their chicken salad. Sometimes I'd get another chicken sandwich, get the tacos, make a nice little world tour sampler, bring it back. Awesome. But my, one of my favorites out there, and I've only had it once in my life, and that was when we went to Austin, was Whataburger. Whataburger's is, big out isn't there. Isn't there one around here now? There I is. There is. See if you can find that. If there's a Whataburger around here, we're going immediately. Because Whataburger, it, it, it's weird because Whataburger has sort of the same color scheme as old fashioned Burger King. It was brown, orange, and white. And you walk in there, it has, it looks like, try to think of the pattern of it. Trying to think what, like, I, I guess here on the East Coast, if you know Junior's Cheesecake, the box that's in it, it's the orange and white stripe kind of thing. That's what, what a burger looked like. But you went in there, you got food that looks like Burger King, like their big sandwich looks like a Whopper, but it doesn't taste like a Whopper. It was actually really good. They had really cool sauces for it. They're, they had spicy ketchup for everything. Oh, I was confused. I was thinking of Wahlburger. Still got to try that too. I know there's a couple yeah. that open. And they're even in the stores now, in the supermarkets, you can buy... The pre-made uh, wall burger beef for uh, for hamburgers. There's a, a wing stop that just opened up near me. Wow! All right, we'll have to try that out. There's like a crap ton of wing stops here that are everywhere, but I've always been kind of scared to go to them because they look really shady. And I don't know if it's just the ones here or if it's ones that if they're just all like that. But there's a shit ton of them. That and Buffalo Wild Wings. I've never been there. We don't have one of those in Hawaii. Never tried it. Buffalo Wild Wings. I've came been there in, a couple of times with Eric. It's okay. It's okay. It's just like fried food. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings came into the New York area maybe less than 10 years ago. It was within this decade here. And I didn't realize when I was living in Atlanta for a little bit down in the summer of 96, there was a place called BW3s right near where I went. I uh, used to go to work. And I used to go there a lot because people would talk about the wings, the buffalo wings. You go in there and there's the whole the whole wall had the whole degree of sauces and rubs and everything you wanted. So you were making your own concoctions and they were making it to order. And it was more of a spectacle than it was just a restaurant. But the food was pretty good, too. So it was always busy. And I always wondered what happened to BW3. And BW3 is Buffalo Wild Wings. So when they it was Buffalo Wild Wings and, and Wex, something like that. Rex? Rex. What is that? I think it wex. I think it's wex. It means sandwich. Oh, so, like roast beef on wex. Like yeah, bun, yeah, yeah, like that. Bread. Okay, gotcha. So then they dropped that that third W, and it just became Buffalo Wild Wings, which I had no idea over the course of time that this was the same chain I was going to when I was living in Atlanta. You go in there, it's okay. It's like the food is okay at best. You're just like, eh, you know, like like people love going to Hooters for wings, and I think that's overrated too. People love it. Their wings are terrible. They are. I don't know who goes there for wings. The breaded ones, they're so gross. They're always soggy. They don't taste good. 
they're like over, their sauce is not good. They're either overly fried because uh, they're breaded wings, which are not good. They're overly fried or they're not properly drained because sometimes you bite into it and then there's just the oil still comes out. And it, uh, yeah, how people felt about the peanut butter oil is how I feel when the oil was coming out of the wings. Just like, that's not good for you. I'm not going to do that. I would like to try Wingstop just to find a, a place that a decent place that does wings. I've gotten to the point where I don't even like wings anywhere anymore because they're all fried. I've really grown into the grilled wings now. Like I found a couple of restaurants that do grilled wings, but they're takeout order. So I'll go and I'll pick them up. But you get a nice thing, and they're 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 grilled, and then their pizzas like brick oven stuff, and it's it's just all amazing. But I, I'm all about the grilled wings now instead of doing fried wings. I won't eat them anymore. Wow. I mean, I'll eat any wing. Well, you put a wing in front of me, I'm going to eat it as long as it's good. But uh, I mean, grilled is nice. I like fried, though. If you haven't tried them, Zia, if you find a place that does grilled wings, give it a try. Because grilled wings works great with the buffalo sauce, but it's also good if you do dry rubs on them, too. I've never had a grilled wings, but I there is a place sort of down the street from where I live that has baked wings. Those are actually pretty good, too, and it makes me feel like less of a trash person when I eat it. Like, when I'm done, I'm like, oh, okay, I feel normal, not sick. Oh, huh. I would try baked wings. I don't know if I ever had baked wings, but I definitely yeah. would try those. Baked wings can be really good. Like, you can actually bake wings and get them just as crispy as fried. I'm up for that. There's just, like, there's just like a method you have to do it with, like, uh, you know, like how you prepare the chicken. You got to cook it on, like, a baking rack so the air circulates around it. But you can bake wings and get them easily just as crispy as fried. Uh, one other thing we talked about with fast food was Jollibee. And Jollibee is this chain that out of the Philippines that I didn't know anything about until I saw that Anthony Bourdain's uh, Parts Unknown episode where he was in the Philippines and he talks about one of his favorite places to eat in the world. He walks into this place that just looks like a, a weird chicken place with a bee on it. And he's showing the menu and it, it specializes in fried chicken, but they also make burgers. But they're, I guess another big feature item on their menu is they make a spaghetti with hot dogs in the in the sauce. And then it's got melted cheese on it. And, it, and everyone was like, ew, it looks like junk food. Yeah, well, one, it I is, need it. it's junk food. Two, definitely want to try it. And three, I found out four blocks from where our studio is in Midtown Manhattan is a Jollibee on 8th Avenue. Oh, there is one in the city. Yeah. I only saw the one in Woodside. I didn't know there was one in the city. Like, I'll come in there and meet up for lunch. Yeah, 39th Jollibee. and 8th, I think. Uh, I was walking past. I think that's where I saw it. But now that I know that's there, I definitely am going to go and try it one time for the, you know, screw the consumer. I'll do it for myself. I want to try the hot dog spaghetti. See how it is. I want to try all of it. Yeah. So come in, uh, come and meet me uh, sometime. We'll walk over there and give it a try. I have <laughs> actually been to Jollibee's. When I moved to San Francisco, the... I moved there for like six months and the first place I went to was Jollibee's. I didn't try the spaghetti hot dog thing or whatever, but the rest of their food's actually pretty good. Like it's just a decent, I don't know, there's something about it. It's trash food, but it's good food, like good trash. How is their their fried chicken compared to say Popeye's, Church's, KFC, those kind of chains? I've never been to Popeye's or Church's because that's another thing we don't have in Hawaii. We just have KFC, but it's pretty comparable to KFC, I feel like. Maybe a little cheaper, but like similar. Like it's not it's not too far off. They, they gotta have Popeyes in L.A., right? Yeah, they do. I just haven't gotten around to trying it. It's just one of those places that every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to go there, but just never have. Again, I keep going to KFC because KFC is good. KFC is good. And KFC is addictive. I like their little like their si they're smaller than like the popcorn chicken and shit more than their actual like fried. What are their little sandwiches called that they, they have like six oh, different the sliders? The, something like that, but they have a different name for it. Chicken Littles thing. That might be it. But they, I, I only know because there's a KFC slash Taco Bell that I go to all the time and I always get from the Taco Bell. You're in the KFC. You're in the Taco Bell. You're in the combination KFC and Taco Bell. I know that's not the song, but it fits for what we were doing here. Uh, KFC is good. Uh, if you try to get their extra crispy stuff, it, it it's like they're trying too hard, and whatever it does kills the flavoring. It's like it's like really bad breading. They just something. like double fry it, or like it just doesn't taste good. No, it's a different mixture of what they bread the chicken in before they fry it. So they do extra crispy, and it's just I guess more breadcrumbs or more whatever into it. And it doesn't taste as good as the original, which is just a fried greasy mess, and it's delicious. It's so bad for you, but you get a large side of coleslaw, you get the potatoes and the gravy, shitty, the shitty potatoes. Yeah, because they're you know it's a mix. They're not regular pure mashed potatoes. You know it's a powdered mix that they've. 
totally just totally that powder mix. You can see it like by looking at it. You like that KFC mashed potatoes you can look at and you know exactly what it's going to taste like before you put it in your mouth. It's like, oh, it's not going to be that good. The gravy is going to just have enough salt to give it flavor so that I can, you know, stomach it. It's not that great. You ever see that South Park episode where Cartman gets addicted to KFC? And Wait. it becomes like currency. There's a trade war going on because he needs to have a like. It's like almost like he's a meth head because he needs to have the gravy. But yeah, we'll go to Jollibee's at some point and try that yeah, out. What else did we miss? Uh, oh, the end of the Rainbow Bagel, which I was very happy about. Rainbow Bagels are, are obnoxious and well, annoying. Not the end of the Rainbow Bagel. The end of the place that made the Rainbow Bagel famous. Because so, every place has Rainbow Bagels. Yeah, but they're the ones being credited to of uh, from. For making it exactly yeah the creators right well that's where you, i mean that's a start if you if you kill it at the source then you know, hopefully like the domino effect happens and then all the others will fall cut soon. off the head and rest will die right unless it's a snake where then it grows back and it's still slithering around for some yeah, reason <laughs> well, it works with worms snakes are worms I don't know if that's true, but we'll just go with it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so there's this place out of Brooklyn. What's the place called? The Bagel Bakery or the Bagel it's Shop? Called the Bagel Store. The Bagel Store is the official name of the place. And this place came to uh, to public attention and fame because they created the infamous Rainbow Bagel. If you don't know what that is, you'll go and Google it. But if you do know what it is, it's a bagel that is pretty much just tie dyed. With all different colors, and it's just obnoxious. I think it's just a regular plain bagel. But then they make the rainbow cream cheese to go with the rainbow bagel. And then other places started ripping it off from the bagel shop and started calling it like unicorn cream cheese and fairy stuff and all these really dumb, obnoxious Always names. Unicorn poop. Always unicorn poop. Yeah, it's it's terrible. So they have they this whole thing became an obnoxious trend, and I see so many people eating those things, and they're you, they're not your typical tri-state area person. Where in the Northeast, bagels are amazing. You can go to almost every place, and they have good bagels. There are bad places, but more places than not have really good way of making bagels. To go this far to ruin something that's so good, and it's not even like they ruin. Like if they made rainbow bagels for other flavors, then they would there'd be you know blood in the streets and outrage. Like if it's like you ruined an everything bagel by making it an everything rainbow bagel Ugh. or an everything and egg bagel. It's just and they're overly sweet and it's just it's not it's not necessary. No, not at all. Not at all. Not enjoyable. And the people who buy them are tourists and dumb and obnoxious. You just want to just ruin their time and smack it out of their hand and just look at them and go, no. They just want to take it for their Instagram picture and all that shit. Like, yeah. But they don't taste good. Like no, one's go like, no one is actually going there to get one to enjoy eating. Like, they're going there to take the picture, to try it for the first time. But no one's going back to be like, oh, I want another rainbow bagel. Like, and they maybe someone's kid will. But not an adult, not that I know of. No, and they cost more than the regular bagels. Because if you look at the cream cheeses, some places, you know, nowadays have a whole plethora of, of cream cheese choices. Because it's not just cream cheese or veggie cream cheese anymore. You get them with different kinds of olives. You get them with cookies and cream. You get them with uh, Nutella. You get them with a maple walnut mix. Like all different kinds of, uh, of cream cheeses that are laid out almost in like an ice cream display, like Baskin Robbins, where you're looking through the glass. I'm going to try the Nutella cream cheese by the way nutella sucks i know people like it but it sucks so I hate, nutella. I hate nutella so they get the rainbow cream cheese to go with the rainbow bagel but the rainbow cream cheese is like a dollar 45 more than what the regular cream cheese so now you're just paying for this dumb novelty for your stupid instagram that you get six likes and then other people are tagging why did you waste your money getting a rainbow bagel you look like an idiot and that person would be me i Ugh. hashtag rainbow bagel and i criticize every one of them it is a problem. It is a problem. Did you really go try one? No, never. No, but there's enough bagel places in Manhattan, especially where all the stu you know, the studios that we have. There's always uh, some kind of uh, of um, long term family run bagel deli kind of combination that has uh, you know people go in there and get their bacon egg and cheese on a roll, typical you know, New York style buttered roll breakfast kind of things. They get their bagels. And the really respectable places, the ones that look like they're dirty, but they're not, that you know have the good bagels, don't sell that stuff. It's all the new ones that open up that have a very super clean 
like tiled facility and it's all bright lights and there's music playing and they maybe have the ball like ESPN is on the TV on a, on there for you while you're waiting online. It's those kind of places that charge you more for everything and have all that bougie shit. I always thought that the the rainbow bagel sounded stupid because it's literally just for color. It's not going to taste like anything. It looks really dumb. Is that really all it is? It's just sweeter. Yeah, it's like a little sweeter, and it, it is just like a, you know, a lot of food coloring, but it does taste sweeter than a regular bagel. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. I, I never had a like a strong urge to go try one of those because it just seemed dumb. However, I'm sorry. I'm one of those people. I would try all of those cream cheeses. I love cream cheese, and I love that you can put different things in cream cheese. There was one that I saw. There was a bagel place in um, Jersey that I have starred in my phone still that I want to go to. Cause they have like a bagel sandwich. That's like a cookies and cream bagel with the, with like Oreo cream cheese filling sandwich thing. And they also do the same thing with like hot Cheetos or I think just regular Cheetos or whatever. I don't know. That to me sounds really awesome. They had all those things. They had like the cookies and cream. They had fruity pebbles, uh, cream cheese. They had like maple baking cream cheese, like all different kinds of cream cheeses at the rainbow bagel store. So you can get all that stuff. But I mean, a lot of the bagel stores just have that stuff now anyway. You go in there and like most of them have some sort of fancy like dessert cream cheese. And like, I don't know. I mean, I don't really like those. Like the most I'll get is like strawberry cream cheese because sometimes I'll get cream cheese and jelly on a bagel. And that just like cuts the difference and I can just get strawberry cream cheese. But that's pretty much it. Or uh, there's one place by me that does really good bacon flavored cream cheese with like chunks of bacon in it. And I get that. See, that, on a bagel that doesn't with sound too sour bad. pickles on the bagel too and it's really good that's the thing i was i was just gonna ask you was, was this the pickle bagel that he got oh yeah it's my favorite it's like eating a cheeseburger like without having a cheeseburger on it it's i so will good. admit right i like all of those things and the way he described that last time sounded disgusting to me but he was swearing up and down it's not and then i was thinking about it it's like bacon cream cheese with the sour pickles on I like all of those things. I may like that. Like, I, I would give that a try. I would not give the rainbow bagel a try. Because you like bacon. You like cream cheese. I love sour you pickles. You like pickles. Yeah. You like bagels. Like, what's they're all just mixed together. That's a, That actually legitimately sounds awesome. I want to figure out how I can get that here. That sounds good. And I didn't even know about it. Like, I was just at, like, the, it was at the Polish bagel shop, and the lady was like, would you like pickles on that? Now, it was like, I'll epiphany i was like i didn't even think about that as an option i was like hell yeah i want pickles on this like fuck yeah. I was like, all the pickles yeah well considering the fact that the literally the only kind of bagels they have in hawaii are just if you buy store-bought bagels like sarah lee or whatever that i and i realize those are not bagels like lenders There's, i don't even know what leonard's is like we had sarah lee or like wonder bread but like those kind of or bleh, words those kind of crappy brands. I said uh, not Leonard's Lenders bagels were, were these bagels that they're trying to sound like authentic Jewish style bagels, but they look like like Ennerman's don't small donuts. They're in a sleeve, like a clear sleeve with the little uh, the little plastic thing on the side that has the date, and they have it in the refrigerated section, like the refrigerated bagels, and you, they're so weak and soggy. Like why, like we're in an area where it's plentiful. We are the land of bagels, and why would you go and buy this stuff when you have it here readily the land available? Of bagels, what a great place! I want to. I like. I like that I live in the land of bagels. Now that you say, it. Brian has the bacon one, which is. I the more I think about it, now I do want to try. But for me, it's just uh, this may be gross to a lot of people. Salted bagel with green olive cream cheese. No, that sounds fucking amazing. I love green olives, and that sounds awesome in in a bagel. The only time I had, I think, a real bagel was when my husband, who's from New York, um, we went, we were over on the East Coast and he took me to a place in Jersey that had bagels. And I, th I think that was my first bagel, but it just had a little bit of melted butter, I think, just to try it. And it was like melt in your mouth. Holy shit. My mouth is watering. Thinking about it now. Good. I like salt bagels. It's mm. like having a pretzel for breakfast, but not being embarrassed by ordering a pretzel for breakfast. Anything else that we needed to talk about or we can just talk about other stuff? Oh, we talked about the lady who... Uh, uh, who who died and had her body blowed up by the military. Her son went to claim her body and didn't realize her body was uh, left to the military, I guess, for scientific... No, they left, they left it for Alzheimer's research. That's what I was saying, for scientific research and yeah. what have you. Something happened in the paperwork, and they had her set up for detonation. They actually had, they had uh, explosives tied to her, and the the body i guess was on a chair and they blew the body up <laughs> yeah, they, 
with, with like an with a, an IED, like an improvised explosive device, they just blew her up on like a lawn chair. But I mean, it's not, I don't. She didn't feel it. It's I mean, at that point, you're not you're not a person anymore, right? Like you're dead. It's just whatever made you a person is gone. I understand for loved ones that would suck, but for, in in all actuality, it doesn't matter. Why are they blowing up people though? That's my question. What are they trying to test when it comes to that stuff? They just want to know what kind of damage like IEDs and stuff are going to do. So that way, when they bring people in to bandage them up, they'll know what kind of wounds to look for. Trauma research. For, like, ways thing, all that. Yeah, it's research, basically. But like we said last week, I didn't know I could have the option of blown up in military test as what I could do with my body when I'm done. Because that sounds awesome. Like I totally like, drop me out of a plane onto a minefield. Just boom, like boom, just do it. Yeah, so we had also mentioned about the when you get your driver's license or you fill out for insurance, they have the options. Would you like to be a donor? Do you want to donate your eyes, your liver, your kidneys, all, all to different organizations, to specific people? There's all kinds of things that they want you to do with your body when you die to help other people. And I was talking about how selfish we were that we don't want to give our bodies to other people. But I did like the fact that there's an option that you can be blown up. Like Gittles is like, wow, we could do this. And I'm, I think I'm on board where let's go out as a spectacle, you know, do it. at I want to do it at the, like the, the end of the fireworks celebration at 4th of July. If they can just have a park where as far as part of the big finale. Yeah. There goes yeah. Eric. So you, you have the, you have the big finale where you're seeing, oh, there's the smiley face fireworks and then there's the shapes and that's almost a box, more like a trapezoid, but yeah, okay, that's what's going on here, different colors. And then they start ramping it up where the big ones start getting so loud that it's echoing across the park, off of buildings, across the water, all the lights are going, you know the big finale's going and then it cuts quiet really fast and you're everyone's like, ah, thinking that's the finale of it, but no, then you hear... The timpani drums rolling and all the lights move down to this field and you see a row of people deceased in chairs. They could be posed. Remember how Family Feud used to do it in the 70s and 80s where they would introduce the fa the family and the sign would move from their name and they'd be in some kind of pose like they were in the living room yeah, to make it look, yeah, look like a shitty painting. Yeah, to make it look like some kind of uh, like some historical artwork. That's what they should do. They The lights come down, boom, and then you got all the deceased people posed doing whatever. Maybe one person's doing the floss from Fortnite, you know, some kid that died tragically. And this is, you have it all out here and then they do the big finale, Boom! All legal. Okay. Question: Is that now going to be like your funeral? Like that's how that's what you invite everybody to come say goodbye to you to to watch you explode instead of having like a regular wake and a regular funeral. Where everybody comes. You just have them come and do that instead. Well, I've already started the GoFundMe for Eric, so this is happening. <laughs> it's not me. I thought you were the one that really wanted to do this. I was just. Oh yeah, yeah. No, but like I'm setting you up first. I'm like, turning it into a spectacle GoFundMe. here. I'm all poisoning right. you tomorrow, Eric. All right, so Brian thinks I'm going before him, and chances are that's probably true. But if we go to do this, yes, you got to go out in the biggest way possible. So, But I think here's the thing. There's a reason that people have uh, uh, memorials or, or visitation and stuff like that to go through the grieving process. So I think... When you die, I think you do, and also it's you know depending on your religion how the, how they do it. But I think you have your your viewing, right? People come in, yeah, they get together. The religion that just gets you blown up. <laughs> well, no, that's personal preference. Religious is bef the step before it. So you know, for the family, for your loved ones, they all have to go through that process. Totally fine. You're laid out, open, closed ca casket, whatever you got to do. But then, the funeral is not the burial. The funeral is not. Sp spreading the ashes from because you were, you know, you were incinerated. The funeral is almost like um, a monster truck rally where you got the safety glasses. You're, you're at a certain amount away from it. There's bleachers. They've got the, uh, the noise canceling headphones like they would have in the pit for, for the Indy 500 like that. Kids got those you know different decorative glowing earbud pieces in there. Cause it's going to be so loud. And, you just do it as uh, if you got money, you can do it as a solo private event. But I think they would save it for maybe they put you in a freezer for a couple of weeks. They said, look, we're going to do a big thing at the end of the month. We've got about 27 people here. So we think that's going to be the show. And that's what you do. And you go out in style. We televise it. 
Do you pick an outfit? I think I think you can have those preferences. Like if uh, if you have that what in would your you will, pick? if you have that in your will, you could specify that I'd like to be. I'd like my hair a certain way. I'd like to wear this outfit because of whatever reason. I don't know what I would pick. I really don't know. I have to think about it. Like inflatable dinosaur. Like riding it. Yeah, like maybe like that, like I'm riding a dinosaur. No, I was thinking like those inflatable dinosaur suits that. Oh, the Rex things, like yeah. Raptor suits, yeah. The T Rex. Pretty things. funny. What if you're in one of those big fucking bubble boy things? You know where you're supposed to move around the field. Oh, <gasps> or a sumo suit, the big fat sumo suit. <laughs> they just put you in the bubble boy thing and then they hit you with trucks like pinball and you just fly around. What's that video game that everybody plays? Rocket League. It's like Rocket League. Oh my god, you put the people in these things and you make real life Rocket League. You just drive around with cars playing soccer. So you're going to make a Rocket League like dead person soccer league. Yeah, recently deceased Rocket League. Okay. I mean, I mean that's I a bit wordy. We could come like, out with something buzzier, something we could copyright. I mean, it could definitely happen. You could just have your body flopping around inside the bubble, right? Like you're not tied down. It's just it's just flopping around in there. No, the way the bubble is, it's not just like a huge hamster wheel, a hamster ball where you, you know, you're just flying all willy-nilly inside of it, you know? It'd hate to, if you land in the wrong angle and your your face is smeared up against like this and there's kids in the audience there looking at you and you're like, ah, eyes hanging out. No, they put they insert you. It's almost sexual, if you will. It's a ball with a tight little opening and a tube. They insert you into there, and then that's how you, you control the balance of being inside the ball there like that. So they just slide you into it, and then, like, if you were inflating something, you have the little plastic that you pop in, to lock it in, and then you push it in to seal it so that it can roll perfectly and not come yeah, undone. Yeah, you fall out. And yeah. Shit. You're right. That's very sexual. It sounded like the start of a porno. That tight little hole in there. <laughs> you know, stranger things happen, and when this becomes a thing, I'm sure the porn will have some kind of knockoffs. You can you can pioneer that, Z, if you, if you want to. I'm down. I want to be the pioneer of a new porn style because there's not a lot of those coming out. You know, everything's been done. Like, literally everything. All right. We should take a break. When we come back, uh, we're going to touch on some movies real quick. Zia went and saw Hobbs and Shaw. Brian and I went and saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We got our thoughts on that. And then a couple of quick updates of what's going on in the world of TV and news. It's August. There's not a lot of shit going on right now. And more stuff will start happening as we get into the fall. So probably like the second week of September is when we start getting all the TV news for, for the broadcast and cable channels. What's going on with that? We'll start getting more information because D23 is coming up pretty soon. So we'll get uh, that information for what's going on. Uh, all the other additional stuff for the Disney Plus service. And then probably hearing about what HBO Max is going to do which is the other big service that's coming there's a lot coming just not right now in a few weeks it'll all be here and we will cover it but for now we're going to take a break we'll be right back more it's eric nagel it's eric nagel next it's eric nagel follow the show on twitter instagram snapchat youtube and facebook at it's eric nagel we're back back with it's eric nagel Welcome back to segment two of It's Eric two. Nagel. Two. Two. Sorry, I just wanted to get in on the two. Everybody was saying two and I felt left out. You can, you can do it. Two. You can do it. Put your two into it. See what I did? Okay, that's too far. Eric. Get out. <laughs> anyway, Eric Gittles and Zia here with you. Looking at last week's box office coming in at number one. And we're going to get to this in just a moment because Zia did see this. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Now, depending what you read and or who you see comments from, either it was a massive success or it was uh, a flop because it didn't open up to as big as some of the Fast and Furious movies did. But for the spinoff, I think it made like $180 million worldwide for its opening weekend, which is not bad at all. So... That's going to be Pretty around crazy. for a while, and then it also ensures that there will be either more of Hobbs and Shaw or other kinds of spinoffs for the Fast and Furious. Coming in at number two, the boring live reenactment of The Lion King from Disney. Number three, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Number four, Spider-Man Far From Home. And number five, Toy Story 4. I still haven't seen Toy Story 4. I need to go definitely see that. Uh, opening this weekend, I don't know if there's anything really... Oh, Dora and the Lost City of Gold. No one cares about that. Oh, The Kitchen. 
By the way, the Kitchen movie has uh, Melissa McCarthy, Elizabeth Moss, and uh, Tiffany Haddish. Yeah, I saw the trailer for it twice. One of the guys I work with has a role in the movie. He's part of one of the mafia outfits. Comedian Aaron Berg. If you see, if you look in the trailer, you see him in there. He's the bald muscle dude. He's only like yay high, but he's leaning over the uh, the bar when the the mobster guy is threatening the the women, saying that you can't take the uh, you can't run this place. We're gonna take you out or something along the lines. And Aaron's in there. So congratulations to my pal Aaron Berg on his new movie that is coming out. That movie looks. Sorry if you wanted to watch it. it looks so fucking stupid to me. It looks just like they're like, oh, we're gonna do another like Ocean's Eight thing. Like, look, women are in charge and that shut the fuck up. Anyway, it looks like another Ocean's 8 thing or another uh, like f- that female Ghostbusters thing they did. I have zero interest in that movie. I am going to see Dora, though. That is an interesting side, a side step to it. I did not see that coming about going to see Dora. Uh, what else opens this week? Like, I don't know. I mean, I saw the trailer for The Kitchen. And I feel like I saw the whole movie in the trailer. I did, I too. I don't think there's I don't think there's going to be any surprises in it that I didn't see. And. I think it said that it was like Vertigo or Image, so I'm wondering if it's based on a comic. It might be. I don't know. It, it seems but. like a movie I would watch, but it would have to be like if the, it was on uh, FXX for the weekend or something, you know, or if uh, it was like a cheap rental on iTunes. I think I would watch it there. Yeah. I don't know if I'd go to the theater to actually see it. I'm not a big Melissa McCarthy fan. I do... I do understand when she's doing like she's starting to do more serious roles now where she comes off a bit Kathy Bates ish where she's the crazy, you know, terrified woman that you don't want to cross paths with. But then she goes and does movies like The Heat with Sandra Bullock. And then she's the wacky, crazy giant lady who's got the heart of gold and a mouth of sass. And it's, it's like. She's good at what she does, but she's all over the place at the same time. It's like you keep forgetting that, like, I think I like her. I'm not 100 percent sure if I do, but I think I like Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, I like her. I think she's pretty good in a lot of things. Uh, it's not getting the greatest reviews on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, it's also being yeah, released at the end of August. So, you know, the the, the tail end of the, of the summer movie season. So that's where they throw all the stuff that, that they have to get out there. They put it in around this time here. Uh, also, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark comes out. Yay, is I'm this, looking forward to that. Is this the Guillermo del Toro movie? Uh, yeah, he produced it. And it's based on the uh, the book that we all read like growing up, you know, the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Yeah, I wanna, Did I, you not read that, Eric? No, I think that was the like a click below me as far as generational interest. Really? Yeah. I was reading that when I was in like sixth grade, so you were only like a grade or two above me. I was three grades above you, actually, but... Yeah, I, I never I read know. that. The scary Stories was like, it was still pretty good, though. Wasn't much of what we call a reader as a kid, and boy, does it show. So, Well, I'm looking forward to the movie. Uh, it's getting really good reviews, and it looks good. There's that weird movie with Kevin Costner and the guy, the father from This Is Us that keeps dying and coming back. I don't know how that show works, but apparently like they killed him off a while ago, but he's still in every promo that I see on TV. I don't know how that happens, but he's driving around in a race car with a dog, and it's called the Art of Racing in the Rain. So that's opening. If you if you uh, you're looking for some, I guess like a rom com. Maybe it's a chick flick. I don't know what it is. That movie makes me so, that whenever I I was just, I was literally just talking about this last night. That preview makes me so angry because again I don't know what it is. I don't know what they're aiming for. Is there a talking dog that narrates it? I don't know. The whole thing just looks so dumb. It makes me so angry. That's pretty good. It's like it's a talking dog. This asshole keeps taking me for rides around the countryside. I just want to eat and stay in the house and eat my bone. That's how the dog would narrate it. Yeah, that would be more realistic instead of, oh, I, they just made it. See, I think it's a rom-com, but like from the point of view of a dog, maybe. I don't know. It just, I, ugh, it looks so bad. Uh, opening early next week, too, if, if you're looking for something for your kids. Angry Birds 2. I forgot there was an Angry Birds one. I've never, I never played the game, but uh, that movie's coming out in the beginning of next week. Ugh. So you- they're just gonna, they're gonna keep making those, even if it makes like ten dollars over what it costs to make it. They'll be like, let's make another one. Right. Oh, I saw some news for Coming to America two, that they just added on Wesley Snipes and rapper Rick Ross, which I thought was kind of <laughs> okay. funny because Rick Ross. I'm not the biggest fan of his music, but every time I've seen an interview with him. And now this isn't the whole thing, too. It's like he's not the gangster Rick Ross. 
he's the rapper that took the name, which is sort of CB4's plot, if you remember that movie back in the 90s. I love uh, CB4. I do too. Sweat from my balls. Maybe that'll be Sweat the, from my balls. Maybe that's got to be bonus time today. We'll do Sweat from my balls from CB4. Um, he uh, took the name Rick Ross and made a very successful rap career using the name. But he's just this big kind of uh, burly dude who also seems kind of goofy jolly at times when he's rapping about this hardcore stuff so he's like a weird mix of things i'll I'll be interested to see how he does in this movie here but uh, i hope this i hope this lives up to some i mean i'm glad they're not rebooting coming to america it's going to be a continuation of where they are in their lives now arsenio hall's back i just don't see why it's necessary though i don't see why it's necessary either but it's going to happen so i am going to check that out and yeah, for, I mean, I'll see it, but I'm not. I'm not looking forward to it. It feels like a cash grab. John Amos is still around. Maybe he's like a multi-billionaire with McDowell's. You know, maybe McDowell's. McDowell's. Get Louis Anderson back. He's around. Sam Jackson's back. Yeah. You know, Sam, all, everyone's still around for yeah, the most part. Bring them all back, and then you had the new people in there. I would love to see what Wesley Snipes' role is going to be in there. It'd be great. Curious. Yeah, no, that might actually be cool. I feel like whenever they do stuff like that, um, continuations always do better than reboots. Like Jumanji, I actually really liked the first one, but it's because it was a continuation and they kind of just did a little bit of a different thing with it instead of trying to reboot it. Whenever you try to reboot something, I feel like it almost never works. I had to yeah, I had to think about re- rebooting because it's happening so frequent now. Uh, a Star is Born came out last year, right? And everybody was all about it. The song did, you know, tremendous on radio and it was winning all kinds of awards for the movie. And, you know, everybody was getting accolades between uh, Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Andrew Dice Clay was getting a lot of great attention for playing her father. And I was thinking about it in the in the age of all this rebooting stuff. This was a generational recreation of the movie because the last time they did this movie was in the 70s and then way back in the in the 40s and the 50s was the original one so is a generational recreation of a movie okay or does that still fall into the whole souring of a reboot of a movie i don't know that's a good question i think maybe it depends on the movie i i know a star is born is a big thing um it's not for me so i just never watched it i never watched any of the previous ones right so maybe maybe it's for uh like people that that want to see like a more modern version of the movie but i feel like it's hard to do that yeah i don't know i i just i feel like maybe generational ones are fine but you wouldn't redo like casablanca would you or anything like that I, I don't, I'm sure if they found a way to do it, they would. I don't think it's off the table anymore. Like, you know, go back as early as 15 years ago, right? The the reboot thing wasn't in the forefront of every movie company going, let's look, dig through our archives. What do we have? How do we change the cast to make it more ethnically diverse? How do we make it go in, in this direction? I was like, oh, this is an all-guy cast. Let's make it an all-female cast. Like, it's always... They, you know, it's disguised as no, uh, as being artistic and and being equal opportunity, but it, it all comes down to money. They won't make anything unless they think they could make money off of these things. So that's why everything's getting rebooted. But when you're talking about something like Casablanca, there used to be some kind of stigmatism to people where there's classic films that should never be touched, you know. And now that's as those that generation is aging out or not being in power anymore or, or what have you. Public opinion is taking over where everything now needs to have to be flipped and and changed and and remodeled and remade. So Casablanca, a film like that, could essentially be on the table for being rebooted at some point. Jaws could be redone. But like, know? but the thing here's the thing. Like, I just don't think there's a market to remake Casablanca. Like, it's such such an old story. Like, you'd have to like update it and modernize it, and it wouldn't. It would just be such a a disservice to the movie. Like, I don't know what you'd be trying to get out of it. You know what I mean? Like you'd have to remake it, but try and remake it in that time period. You know what I mean? Like, cause otherwise like the whole story doesn't work because of cell phones, you could just text someone and then be like, you know what I mean? Like it ruins the plot of the movie. Yeah. Like modern technology. So like you, like how would you redo it? You could do a mod. Like, all right, that's a good point. You could do a modern production of it. You just can't modernize the story itself 
Yeah, like, is that, and the thing is, I just don't think there's, like, a market for it. Like, I don't, like, the people that liked Casablanca are, are like, older now. No one from our generation's like, hey, you, you watch Casablanca? No, like. But also part of the essence of, 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 of why that film was so great was the way the black and white was used for the film. So, well, yeah, for sure. If you're colorizing it, if, you, you know, it's all modern stuff, it definitely is not going to work. But, unfortunately, unless you know in the next few years the tides change and people are going to start investing more in original and obscure properties to to try to build new franchises and make new headway in the entertainment world yeah i mean what you said those films could be on the you know they could redo Cas- casablanca in a modern tale twist you know it doesn't mean it's going to be good but it doesn't stop them from doing this now says jaws earlier technology now is is better than what it was way back then that they had actual mechanics for the shark to give you the real feel of the stunts and everything happening here. Nowadays, the way CGI is, uh, has developed, they won't make an actual mechanical shark. It'll all be green screen. It'll all be blue screen. It'll all be, uh, the light suits and everything on them where they put everything in post and they'll remake it at some point. Just be like, cause we can make it scarier and, and, uh, more intense and the shark will be more fierce and you'll never know. And it'll be a lot of jump scares with the shark now because that's a trend thing there too. What's the but stop? I feel like they don't even, but they don't even need to remake jaws because there's a freaking shark movie comes out like every year. Now right. there's like 48 meters below and shark. Shark Frenzy Three and like is there a, oh, is there a need to leg, reboot any of this stuff? Movie and like there's no need what? to reboot anything now. That's but, what I'm saying. But they like, do it. There's 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 no reason. But that stigmatism, that sort of basic understanding with people is like, hey, look, these movies you don't touch because they're masterpieces. I thought you you know it's like you wouldn't think to remake um, like Vertigo or uh, Psycho from. Uh, uh, from Alfred Hitchcock stuff. They made sequels to them. They made that TV show, The Bates Motel, which was a different interpretation of the story, but they're not... Oh, wait, they did remake Psycho, didn't they? Wasn't Anne Oh, Hitch yeah, in with it? Vince Vaughn. Yeah, they did. All right, that doesn't and it was count. Like, and it was like the shot-for-shot shot shot remake, and it didn't work. Like No one liked it. They're yeah. like, why did we do this? But that that's, that's weird. I've never even heard of that. I guess um, I like dodged a bullet there because it probably wasn't good but i don't even think i heard about that one i just i don't understand why they don't make like i was a big reader i read a shit ton um and i just i don't understand why they don't pull there's so many stories out there that you could pull and make into good movies i think you could make for real good video game movies but nobody ever does it i liked warcraft though um but I just I feel like there's so many other things you could do besides reboots. Are, are they just running out of ideas? They don't want to take the risk. Like I'm not I'm not really sure. They're just lazy. They're like they're seeing things that are existing properties. It's like they're writing a trend of of an like easy a fix. House, you know what I mean? It's like the the groundwork is already there. You just have to take it, you know, polish it up, put a couple of new bells and whistles on it, and turn throw it sideways and stick it up your candy ass. Yeah, exactly, Eric. That's exactly what they do. And then we pay fourteen dollars a ticket for. And sucks. Right. But unfortunately, that's, I mean, I forgot all about the Psycho movie, but there's, you can name, talk to anybody and everyone has a classic movie. That's and Charlie's different. Angels, that was like another thing. I mean, like how many different things they bring back all Did the time. Did you see that trailer before Once Upon a Time in New York, the new Charlie's Angels trailer? We're now Bosley. Once Upon a Time in New York. I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, that's what I meant. Once Upon a Time in see that Hollywood. Trailer. Uh, New York is the sequel. Um, so once upon a time in Hollywood before that had the Charlie's Angels trailer before I did not see that because the movie theater that I'm at only shows trailers for the movies they're going to get. So we're not getting that movie. Bosley's now played by um, is it Emma Thompson? I think that's who's playing Bosley there. And they changed the whole thing up. And now they're not just, you know, agents. Now they all have like MMA backgrounds and weapons training. And it's now a full contact fighting thing. And uh, super slick. And I said, oh, if all this is changing, I bet you Charlie is going to be a female, too. And actually, Charlie wasn't. It was still a disembodied voice of a, of a, of a gentleman at the very end of there and say, hi, Charlie. And I just looked at it and I go, this was a movie that didn't need to be made. Nope. Even the ones they did back in, I don't even think they were 90s movies. I think they were 2000s movies uh, with Drew Barrymore. Lucy Liu and um, Cameron Diaz. Thank you. I I was forgetting the other actresses. I think they did two, if not three, but I know there was at least two. And that was sort of a nostalgia thing. Like that was recreating the TV show 
kind of deal. And that should have been it. Now you're rebooting the movies that were based on the TV show. And it's a who cares movie. There was nothing like even the fight sequences are just they were too sh- like they were too slick to not even be interesting. You know, it wasn't that they were well choreographed. Everything was too, like the angles and the shots were too spot on. So you saw yeah. every hit, every move, every. And it's like, this is just, this, this is boring. This is nothing. Yeah. And I feel like if you're going to do a movie like that, you, the choreography, it has to be good. And like you said, it can't be too polished. Like, I feel like the whole point of doing um, action movies like that is you kind of, I mean, I guess for the most part, want it to be real and gritty i went to go see anna that was the movie and that was like it the the plot was cool it wasn't a bad idea but the movie like fell flat and sucked because the choreography was bad you could tell the girl that they got was not she she wasn't like she couldn't fight for real like not that you have to fight for real but you have to be able to make the choreography look real otherwise what's the point why are you making that movie Anna was the one uh, about the young girl. She was a Russian girl who was living just this really crappy life. But she was thinking about joining, I think, the military or the army or something like that. Her dad was in it. I don't know. She had some drug boyfriend and she was a mess. But some, um, I guess, like uh, Russian agency, like spy agency recruited her. And then she went off to work for them. But the whole movie, she's just trying to get out because she just wants to live a life and like not owe anyone or like work for anyone or be owned by anyone. The plot wasn't bad. It didn't have, it wasn't a bad idea for a movie. It just, the the choreography sucked. And I feel like some of the acting was just, nah. Yeah, that, that's unfortunate. There's, a, oh, there is a movie I do want to see. And then we'll get into Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, it's coming out on the 21st of August called Ready or Not. Yeah, I can't wait for that one. It's weird. It's like The Purge, but it's also like Clue. And it's also like that, uh, remember that Michael J. Fox movie? With, it's, like, it's like who's next if you saw who's next i don't think i did uh, yeah no ready or not looks awesome it's about a, a woman and she gets married into a family that's basically like the parker brothers like a board game family and then on the night of the wedding they pull out a whole bunch of old like tiny weapons and guns and shit and they're like all right now we hunt you and then they hunt her and then she has weapons and she's allowed to hunt them in this like crazy mansion it looks awesome so it's all in the mansion. It's not like on the grounds of the property. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's like on the grounds and shit too, but uh, reviews are great for it. I hear it's a lot of fun, so I'm looking forward to that. There was a Michael J. Fox movie that this also, watching the trailer, had a feel of this. And I'm trying to think who, what it was called. Damn it. Wasn't Damn it. The Frighteners, was it? No, in fact. I liked Frighteners, though. I know. I know I- Me too. I said a while ago that I never saw the movie, and somebody it's actually great. sent it to me. It's great. If you've never seen it, it's, it's really good, Eric. Yeah, I've never seen it at all. It's a, it's a Blu-ray edition of The uh, the Frighteners. I, I do have to watch that still, but that's not the movie I was thinking of. I think the movie was called Greedy. Um, Kirk Douglas was like the grandfather of the patriarch of the family who was about to... like He was this old man with a, with a young wife that everybody, the whole family, thought... She was a gold digger, and then the whole family's like scheming against each other to try to get favor with uh, was it grandfather, uncle, uncle J- J- Jim, John, Joe, Joe. I think Uncle Joe. I think his name was Uncle Joe. Was uh, Kirk Douglas's character, and he's this like bazillionaire, and they're all trying to curry favor in the last years of this guy's life in order to hopefully that he'll give them the money and control of the estate and everything. And uh, like Egg Bailey Jr. is in it. Phil Hartman's in it. It's a really campy movie that I don't know, think really went anywhere, but I remember it fondly because I think it was one of those movies that was on HBO all the time. But um, uh, Michael J. Fox was married to the girl from So I Married an Axe Murder, Tra- Nancy Travis. And they're trying to do politics within the family, but then they're like, it's like, I don't want to do this. I can't be this kind of person they wind up leaving and then the family's accusing them of being oh you're doing this to try to curry favor with that and you know it all works out at the end who gets what money and it turns out uncle joe really wasn't dying it was a whole scheme thing it was like a kind of it was that kind of thing where families were fighting with each other shit in the house it's got that same kind of campy feeling that i saw from the trailer because it looks horrific it looks silly and it also looks funny. Like there's a whole bunch of different layers in this movie that makes it really interesting and appealing to me that I, I can't wait to go see it in the theater. Let's talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. 
not in America because that was the Robert De Niro movie, and not in New York because that's the sequel that's still coming. Gittles went and saw it, told me to go and see it. I went to go see it. Now, I'm going to start with my problem because I have a tradition of my movies fucking up when I go to the theater to see this stuff. And then we're going to get into the, what Gittles thought of this thing. So the real quick of it is I go, I get my ticket, I go on a Saturday midday like I always do, and I go and watch the movie. And the movie, I think, itself is like, what, two and a half hours long? It's like 2.45, so it's too long. Too long. I hit, I guess, about the two-hour mark. And I'll tell you exactly where, where I was at the, the point where the film just suddenly stopped. So... Brad Pitt, spoilers for everybody, Brad Pitt walks the dog, leaves the house, leaves Leonardo DiCaprio's house. Leonardo DiCaprio is in the kitchen making, I think, margaritas. And as Brad Pitt's walking down the hill with the dog, this car slowly pulls up and it's that text guy from the, from the, uh, yeah. from the, from the farmland, from the lot, whatever it is. And he's got a couple of girls in the car and then it cuts back to Leonardo DiCaprio mixing the margaritas and hearing the loud exhaust pipe from the car. And he's like, what's going on here? This is a private road. And as he's walking to the front to see what it is, the film just goes black. I mean, you were literally like 15 minutes from the end. So you were like two and a half hours into it. Okay. Because that's, that's the end sequence at that point. Okay. So, uh, film goes black. Everyone's quiet. Like we're like, else going on is this a soprano soprano's moment is this how the film ends and you just got to interpret it yourself and you're waiting you're waiting now there's there's all kinds of scuttlebutt happening people are getting annoyed about five minutes we're sitting in the dark all of a sudden the lights go up and everyone's now mad they're like oh what's going on what's the problem and uh they send an usher in asking everybody has to leave the theater and why do we have to leave the theater what's going on yeah we can't fix the movie so you have to leave at this point we didn't know how much more was left in the movie i didn't know so uh, according to gittles now i I know i had about 15 minutes left but at that point we didn't know so everybody's annoyed we're walking out and they make you walk over to customer service and they they told us flat out that uh, they can't fix this film they got to get it ready for the next showing and uh, they'll either give you your a refund or passes to another movie so everyone's just looking around and getting mad. Like we sp- spent all that time trying to watch this dumb thing and see the ending. And now we're not going to see the ending. They're like, well, you can go. Wa-. They told us the times for the next showing. And one guy goes, I ain't fucking sitting for three hours to watch the the rest of this movie just to see whatever we missed. Yeah. So I went, they gave me passes again, as they always do when the theater messes up. And I walked out, and the first thing I did was write to Gittles, and I wrote to Matt, and I said, once again, I didn't get to see the movie because the theater fucked up. And uh, I have no plans to go back to the movie theater to see the end of the movie. I don't care if it's spoiled for me. I'll watch it whenever it hits on demand or somebody gives me a copy or something like that. That's when I'll watch the end of the movie. But for everything I did see, I'm going to talk with Gittles here real quick. Um, Giddles was not a fan of this movie. He thought it was all over the place. I thought I heard good review. I was hearing 50 50 from people from word of mouth about how good this movie is. I liked parts in it. There were parts in there that were enjoyable, but I have to agree that the whole story didn't make any sense. It was just like, all right, let's do this part of a story, then this part of a story, and then this part of a story, and just put it all in some kind of sequence and hope this all works out. It was just Quentin Tarantino's giant love letter to Hollywood. Uh, there wasn't much of a plot, to be honest. Uh, like I didn't really like. I mean, I thought the acting was great. Uh, I didn't really like most of the characters. I thought Brad Pitt's character was the best one in the movie, like hands down. Right. Um, the Bruce Lee scene was very funny. I didn't funny. like the story though. Like it just it, like it went nowhere slow. Like it didn't go in nowhere fast. You know what I mean? It went nowhere slow. There was buildups where there was tension with like no payoffs. Um, I don't know. I just didn't like it. And there was nothing. You Look, they were teasing for the longest time before even trailers were coming out that this was set during the Charlie Manson days. So you thought Charlie Manson was going to be pretty involved with all of this stuff. Like they'd be partying yeah. with him or or they might be, you know, converted and, and killing people or any of that stuff. And nothing happened. They no, get there to, was nothing. They like get I to said, the ranch even- and he wasn't even there. You saw him once. In the movie where he came up to the house and realized he was at, like the people that had the the Leonardo DiCaprio's house. 
Uh, not no, not, not Tate's uh, house. Uh, yeah, Roman Polanski's house. Yeah, they, he came up the gate there thinking some previous person lived there and didn't know that they moved, and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry about that," and he walks away, and that's it. Like he gives a, gl- a weird toothless kind of weird tooth gl- uh, glance at Sharon Tate, and she's staring at him from the doorway, and that's it. Yeah, it was really lame. Um, I thought it was going to be a much bigger part of the whole movie. I thought that was like the main point of the whole movie, but it wasn't. And like I said, you know, the the Charlie Manson storyline was very small and like it really doesn't go anywhere. Like there's, you know, the one thing at the Spawn Ranch, there's a couple of spots where like, you know, you see hitchhikers. But other than that, there's nothing like the shot you see in the trailer of Charles Manson is all you see of him in the movie. Like there's there's maybe a a three seconds more of him walking down the driveway, but that's it. There's nothing. There's you don't hear him talking. You don't hear any speeches from you. You don't hear the people even preaching what he's talking about. They're just all they say is Charlie's gonna like you. And that's all they say. And you don't know anything about it. And then, you know, you don't know the ending, but like they changed the whole ending. And it's really <laughs> when they were on the, right, the spawn ranch part real quick. When he goes up there and all the girls are like, oh, you can't bother George. Yeah. He's taking a nap. He's like, no, I think I'm going to go up there. And then they're all kind of holding around like in little factions behind him. So you, it's starting to look like, you know, uh, Children of the Corn, Day of the Dead, any yeah. of those movies where there's an ensemble that's going to kill somebody. And he goes up into the house. And then the way the house is because it's just white trash and dirty and everything it feels like an incestual horror kind of vibe right yeah and, just like it's like really shitty run downtown yeah and he goes into the house and the way he's talking to that lady you're expecting that somebody's going to kill him in that house you know or attack him and he's going to go back gonna- go in the back and he's sleeping in the back and he's like george you're there and now they're freaking out and like like all right something's going to happen so maybe he's dead in the back room and this just got no, your wait you get to the edge of something about to happen and nothing ever happens yeah, then nothing happened. Then it turns out, and jump, jump. George is just there, and everything the lady said was what he said. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like nothing changed. It was just like, oh nope, that's just what what's happening here. This is what's this is it. Uh, I don't know. I didn't like any of that, and uh, I don't know. I just didn't like the movie. I didn't think it was that good. It wasn't. It wasn't a movie for me. And that's what I said last week on the show that everyone heard. Uh, it wasn't a movie for me. And it, if you like that kind of movie, like a big glitzy throwback to that era to that time period to that way of life then you'll probably like this movie but it's not for me i didn't Uh, see the ending i heard uh bits and pieces of of it being ridiculous over the top which is what i which is what i wanted those ridiculous over the top moments that you get from a tarantino movie like uh uh reservoir dogs like pulp fiction like um what's the mexican vampire movie oh dust till dawn from dust till dawn like he has these weird adrenaline pumping moments kill bill they all have this moment or the series of these moments and apparently but this- even in this one it was like it was like so phoned in it just felt like it was you know we just have to end the movie type situation like it was so over the top there's dude there's no joke some girl just running around with her arms in the air just screaming it's like ah like for a, for like three minutes like just running in circles with her hands in the air, just screaming. And then she falls in a pool and she's still screaming with her hands. In the air. Like it's remember that, that episode of Futurama where Zoidberg's uncle comes and makes the movie. And he's like, everyone run around in the background with your arms in the air. Look crazy. Like, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. It was like, it was just so over the top. And like I said, they ch- I didn't like that. They changed the story of like what actually happened in it, I guess, because this is supposed to be a fairy tale. So it's supposed to have a different ending, but I don't know. I, I just didn't like it. It felt and it didn't it didn't even pay off because you didn't care about the Manson people because you didn't spend any time with them. So like when they all get like, you know, murdered in the house at the end, spoiler, uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's just like, OK, if you just want to watch some over the top action for like a couple of scenes here with people just getting their faces bashed in and a dog ripping someone to shreds. Yeah, that'll happen. And a guy and someone gets killed with a blowtorch. Yeah, like it gets really crazy. But it doesn't make sense in the plot of the movie, which there's no plot to the movie. Yeah, I agree. And I didn't see the ending, so I didn't see, I guess, the the big money scene, if you will. But uh, 
it wasn't even a money scene. It was literally just like a quick like, hey, we have to all these people are here. Brad Pitt's high on his acid cigarette and we're just going to just kill all of them. And that's just what happens. And then like the police show up and they're like, I was pretty crazy. And it's like, yep, the sure was pretty crazy. And then it ends. And then credits. <laughs> yeah. And some it's, obscure 60s rock song. Yeah, no. And then, like, you know, the Leonardo DiCaprio's character goes up to the gate to where, you know, Sharon Tate's house is. And they come down. They're like, what happened? He's like, I don't know. These bunch of weirdos tried to kill us. And we just murdered all of them. It's like, oh, you should come up to the house and hang out with me and Sharon and all them. And they're all still alive. And that's, like, how it ends, you know. Spoiler. All right. Well. But, I mean, you you said you didn't care. Yep, not a good movie from me, not a good movie from Giddles. Uh, let's go over to mm-hmm. Zia, who went to see the other big movie that was out, uh, the Fast and Furious spinoff called Hobbs and Shaw, starring Jason Statham and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. What did you think? I liked it. It was actually, it was a lot of fun. It was one of those movies. I tapped out of the Fast and the Furious franchise, I think, at number three. Like, I watched one, two, and three, and then they just kept making them, and I was like, all right, I'm good. Um, but I, uh, this one, I think I went to go see literally just because of Jason Statham and Idris Elba, but it was, uh, it was fun. Like it was just a, you have to go in knowing it's going to be a ridiculous over the top action, insane driving, like nonsense, like where you, you know, where you see stuff and you're like, there's no fucking way that would ever happen. It's just a fun, like ridiculous action movie. Um, but it was like, there were some moments where it felt like they were trying too hard to be funny. And then, um, there were other moments that were actually like legitimately funny, but overall, it was just a lot of fun to go watch. I laughed a lot. Um, the plot was fine. It was there were a couple plot holes, but overall, it was it was just I don't know. It's a good action movie. Go watch it in IMAX. It's fun. You don't go watch those movies for the plot. You go to watch it for the over the top ridiculousness of it, like you know, a motorcycle shooting out of the back of a plane and like landing on a tank and shit, and then that lands on a cruise ship and someone's like, "Whoa, surfs up!" and then it turns into a surfboard or something. You're like, "Wow, this is a crazy movie!" Like that's why you go see these movies. If I remember correctly, before this Hobbs and Shaw one, whatever the last official Fast and Furious one, wasn't there a scene? Where it was The Rock and Vin Diesel and they were racing on like an iceberg and then all of a sudden like a submarine came out of nowhere and shot one of the yeah, cars. Dude. Yeah. It would be cool now. It was a submarine. A, sub, a, a submarine. A submarine. Jesus, I can't speak. A submarine machine gun. Yeah, exactly. You know what it is? It's out. from Rick and Mor- Morty. It's the Ball Fondler show. It's like, what's happening? I don't care. This is great. <laughs> well, I, I haven't seen any of the Fast and Furious, but I remember that in that trailer. All of a sudden, just a sub- they're racing, and then a, the, like the, the top part of the submarine breaks through the ice, and they go veering off in different directions. Yeah, it's a, it's basically just a bunch of that. But it's but that's exactly what Gittle said. That's exactly why you go. You're like, I just I want to watch this. Plus, they they uh, they go to Samoa, and that was just fun for me because it's super similar to Hawaii, and I was like, oh wow, I'm like back home for a minute. So that was that was just fun because it was super different. I thought they shot those parts in Hawaii. Maybe that's why it looked like Hawaii. Maybe that might be why, but they definite. But I mean, just like in general, like his mom, the way she talks and her. They call in Hawaii. We call um, you guys call them flip flops. We call them slippers. But like the local way they say this sleepa, and like that's how she was saying it. So just like a lot of the words and the way they were acting and like just certain things like that because it's I mean there's similar cultures and there's a lot of like Samoans and Tongans and you know different Pacific Islanders in Hawaii. So I was like, oh, this is this is cool for me. And they had real mangoes. Yeah, damn straight. <laughs> they had mangoes that aren't stringy trash mangoes. Uh, so the movie was good. You recommend people go see it. Yeah, it's good. It's just for it's just good for fun. Like you're you're not going in trying to think anything and like dissect the movie. But if you like action movies, yeah, definitely go watch it. All right, I think that about does it for movies. Nothing really with uh, TV that we can wait till next time. I uh, I plowed through the Deadwood series plus the movie from HBO it was three seasons and uh, then a, a movie ten years later. And uh, the boys on Amazon Prime, I plowed through that. So next time, Zia, if you, if you haven't watched it yet, please go watch it. If you have, I would love to uh, talk to you about that next time. And Giddles watched or started watching the OA now that they canceled it on Netflix. Yeah, because I don't make good life decisions. Like my brain is just like all all the time. My brain is just like Brian. Don't make good just the decisions. And I'm like, no, I totally make good decisions. I'm like, oh, I heard the show got canceled. Might as well start it. <laughs> So yeah, so I finished the first season and it's really good. I don't know why it got canceled. Uh, so I don't um, uh, check it out. Let me know. Is that the one on Netflix? The OA? 
Yeah, it's on Netflix. Um, it's it's interesting. Like, it's got a lot of similarities in a way to Stranger Things. It's more serious, whereas Stranger Things had a lot more nostalgia. But it's about this, you know, this woman, and she just, you know, appears after you know disappearing for seven years. And she has these weird interdimensional type things she could do. She gets nosebleeds. She, it's like it's very similar in a lot of aspects to Stranger Things, but it's different. Uh, Jason Isaacs is in it. He's really good. Um, oh, we've had know, it's, we've it's had a really on the show interesting before. show. It's like, it's very intriguing. Like it raises a lot of weird questions. There's a lot of some you know. There's a lot of stupid things that happen in it, but it is pretty cool. So I would say check it out. But like stick with it. It's it's weird. Like you have to be into kind of strange sci-fi stuff to get it because it's got it's dealing with a lot of like meta existential like situations and like you know different re- you know levels of reality and perception and sh- stuff like that so it's got a lot of that kind of vibe to it so if you don't like that it might not be up your alley but it's pretty cool it's fun no that down da- that definitely sounds like something i would like i love all the random weird shit legion is one of my favorite marvel shows that's on um, so yeah, I think I would definitely like that. Except now that sucks that there's what there's just one season, no season two. They're done. Season two, and apparently season two is really good. And the story, the per, the the person who created it and wrote the story and directed it is also the lead in it. And she only wrote it as a five season arc, so it has like a five it has like a five part story. So it's all written apparently already. So I'm wondering if it'll get picked up by someone else. There's a lot of backlash from people, but it, it took two years to put the second season out. So I think if uh, in this day and age, if you give that much time, it's like a death sentence. You know what I mean? You have to be like constantly putting out material. Uh, Netflix, you know, doesn't really advertise all their shows. They advertise their popular shows. And I think that hurt it too. And the similarities in marketing it, uh, like I said, with with Stranger Things could be different, could be kind of confusing. Because people are like, what, you have two of the two similar shows like at the same time, um, almost, you know, similar topics in a way. I don't know. That's Netflix. Uh, there's a show that just showed up on Netflix about a week or so ago. And I just started watching I part of the first episode. I forgot to go back and and continue it, but I'm, I'm going to do so now. It's a show called Another Life. It's oh, got yeah, I saw a trailer for that. Katie Sackoff from um, from Battlestar Galactica. If you if you uh, she was Starbuck, the the female version of Starbuck in in the uh, rebooted show or the reimagined show, whatever you want to call it. But supposedly it's like some kind of stuff lands. Uh, it, it, I think it feels a little Star Trekky. I don't know yet. But uh, suppose like this uh, alien stuff lands all over the planet and they're trying to figure out what it's like an artifact or something. And they're trying to figure out what it is, where it comes from, what does it mean? And okay. that's about as far as I got to it yet. It's not really a great s- description of it, but, you know, I-, I think I'm only 15 minutes into the first episode. Yeah, I mean, that's enough to sell me on it. And the, like it looked kind of interesting based on the artwork for it. So there's 10 episodes for season one. So it's not like it's going to be one of those quick things like, oh, 30 minute episodes and you're done in, in six episodes. And then you have to wait for a whole nother season that may or may not come. Who knows? But yeah, it looks pretty good. I, I can't really give a full review other than, like I said, I only saw a few minutes of it, but uh, it was intriguing. The trailer looked pretty good. So that might be a show on Netflix if, if you want to check that out. <laughs> And with that music, that means we need to get out of here. So let's go around and do the plugs. Zia, what do you have? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Zia underscore land. It's spelled X-I-A underscore land. You can also find me Sunday nights at 9 p.m. on YouTube for Marvel TV Weekly, where we talk about Legion. Uh, Last episode, there was a rap battle, probably one of my favorite things I've ever seen. And uh, Thursdays at 1 p.m., you can find me on the Popcorn Talk for Marvel Movie News. I talk about a lot of Marvel stuff. And uh, Geek Bomb also. If you check out their YouTube, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers, and I create a lot of content for them. So check it out. All right, Gittles, what do you have? Gittlebase on the Twitter, Instagram, and Xbox Live. And that's all I got. What are you playing on the Xbox now that you're back on board? Um, nothing. I've just been watching Netflix. I haven't, I haven't played anything <laughs> in a while, but I might play some Overwatch. Get back into it. It's been a couple months. I tried to pop on to Red Dead Redemption 2 with uh, with Big Kev and Cousin Dave and a couple people. And I don't know what happened on Tuesday, but for the longest time, the Xbox Live Network was just down. 
couldn't do anything, yeah. couldn't connect to anything. So I said, yep, yeah, guess what? I'm going back to the Switch and I'll just go watch Frasier again, as I always do. For me, it's E-Rock Radio across the board on the social medias, but more important, the show. It's Eric Nagel across the board on social medias. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, The YouTube's been doing very well, and thank you for everybody who has been subscribing. If you don't get the show off of iHeart or other places that you find podcasts, if you will, the YouTube version is available. It is edited, though. It's, It's edited from the original broadcast, so you get a version of it, but if you want everything... Like bonus time on some extended stuff and what have you. Subscribe to get the show uh, on the iHeart app, on Spotify, wherever you uh, choose to get it. That's the better version, but it is on YouTube. And if you are on YouTube, throw us a subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and it does definitely help us out. And if you want to leave a voicemail to be used on future shows, call 651 Smithers. That is the phone number 651 764 84 And with that being said, we need to get out of here. So until the next time, everybody, be excellent to each other and have a wonderful time. And we'll be seeing you. It's Eric Nagel. It's the end of do 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 It's the end of do 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 It's the end of do 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 It's the end. Alas, we're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For ways to listen to the show, go to itsericnagel.com. And remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And those two friends can tell two friends. Well, 